who we have here today, and then we will get right to um, introducing Marcella Bremer and Daryl Connor, uh, who are partners with us today in uh, delivering this uh, great session. So I'm excited to be here. I uh, hope you guys are too for our first technically first webinar of 2015. So thank you all and uh, everyone chiming in right now as you were, we're moving on up. We had a great registration, so I'm looking forward to a good session. Um, so let's get our tech set up. So using the technology in your GoToWebinar control panel, you can either use your telephone or your mic and speakers. So in audio mode, you can uh, use your mic and speakers or you can use your telephone. Down here in the questions, if you're not able to use our chat room, you can enter your questions right here and um, Marcella or I will bring them into the conversation. Uh, this hey John, is, John, you want to show your John, show your screen. Thank you. So this is where you guys can enter your questions if you're not able to use our parallel chat room. Um, if you are able to use uh, chatting, here is the link. It's tinyurl.com backslash DKD webinar. It's also, it was on your opening screen. Um, under the chat window for the GoToWebinar control panel. If you go there, click on the tinyurl.com backslash webinar and join us in our in the chat room. I see it. Marcella and Ron are already there. Um, so if you are able to open up a parallel window, have it look something like this, where you'll be able to have the slides on one side for our presentation, and then on the other side of your screen, you can have the chat room window open. Uh, we'll, be a, we'll have a couple pause points during the presentation to uh, ask questions, uh, give feedback, and, and talk with other people that are on the session. Uh, and then if you're not able to use chat, you can go ahead and use the GoToWebinar control panel, and then go to the questions tab and send me any questions that you guys have or any feedback that you guys have, and I will bring that into the room. I see Stacy just joined, and Kelly and Jerry, so welcome. So first, we're going to do a couple poll questions to get us started. Uh, the first one will be, um, in which part of the world do you live? And I'll go ahead and launch that poll, so go ahead and reply. In which part of the world do you live? And if it's other, uh, then please enter that in the chat, either in the GoToWebinar chat or on Chatsy, uh, the Americas, Asia, Europe, Africa, or other. And I can say that we have about 80% voted. We'll take a couple more seconds. And we have a great turnout uh, today from, from all over the world. So thank you very much for that. I'm going to close the poll, share the results. You can see we have 80% from the American. Um, if you are from South North or Canada, South America or Canada, you can put that in the chat room. Uh, Katrina's coming from Australia. I know I saw that she wrote that. And Jerry's from Australia. And then we have 4% from Asia, 8% from Europe. So good. And then the next question, I'll go ahead and get that launched for you. And that's what perspective do you bring today? So what perspective do you bring today? Are you an internal leader? Are you an external consultant? Are you a student? Are you a teacher, professor, or scholar? Or are you an activist or leader in some other capacity? And you can also clarify that stuff in the chat room if you'd like. <laughs> Got about 54% of you voted. Coming in. Yeah, we Take about 20 more seconds and then we'll close and share the results with everybody. As you're, uh, as you're, as other people are voting, think about what brought you here to the, today's session, what intrigued you about today's session, and what questions you have. Um, 
the teaser. We'll be talking a little bit about those in the beginning um, as we open up the session. So I'll go ahead and close the poll and show the results. So we have 33% uh, of you are internal leaders, 40% are external consultants, 13% are students, and 13% uh, are other activists or leaders. So great, thank you all for being here and we uh, look forward to participating with all of you during this session. And so this is uh, <coughs> this is our session for 2015 and it's in partnership with the Leadership and Change magazine and uh, Marcella Bremer who is the editor and founder of that magazine. And this is Ray Payne, Understanding Character and Presence as Change Practitioners with Daryl Connor. So hi Daryl, how are you? I'm doing fine. Hello, everybody. Thanks for being here today, Daryl. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll we'll introduce Marcel, and then we'll uh, go back to the chat room and get started. Well, uh, I began my change management career in 1974. That's when I uh, started Connor Partners, and and for the last four decades, I've been uh, trying to better understand the patterns associated with success and failure of, around around large-scale change initiatives. And in the last few years, I've really focused in on, on what's, uh, what are the critical components to practitioners in our field and what leads to success and failure there. And, um, and that's led to some of the things we'll talk about today. Great, thanks, Daryl. And Marcella? Hi everyone, I am Marcella Bremer. Um, I'm located in Europe, but I am uh, a change consultant and the publisher of Leadership and Change magazine, which is a, a digital global magazine um, for professionals, consultants, coaches, and leaders. And um, we're a bit uh, a different magazine because we want to help professionals make a difference at work. So we are very much focused on positive leadership uh, inclusive, positive change, new organizations and cultures of kindness. And in addition to the, the positive angle, uh, we really care about a personal angle. So we want to know why you uh, care about certain topics, what was difficult in, you know, applying your topics and everything. So we're a bit wary of um, the generalist articles with 10 things to do to please your uh, boss and things like that. And we also like to uh, create a very pragmatic magazine. So everything is easier said than done. Uh, but um, how do you apply these things in your uh, client organization or in your organization? So that is what we're about. And we started this magazine 15 months ago because we really felt that a magazine uh, based on positive leadership, culture, and change was uh, still lacking. So that's it. And I'm really excited to be here on the webinar today. And uh, together with John Spaulding and Daryl Connor, who's also um, a contributor to our magazine. And I have been in his workshop and I can highly recommend it. So let's go for this. Great. Thanks, Marcella. Um, so in the chat room, as we get started, uh, just to give you a couple questions to kind of kick it off, and you can also, if you're if you're not able to get in the chat room, you can put it in the questions tab or in the chat tab um, in your Google Webinar Control Panel. And I sent that link out to everybody again. Um, if you didn't get it, it's, it's trendyurl.com backslash Steve Katie Webinar. And what intrigues you about today's session? And what questions do you bring today? So let's go ahead and, and start thinking about those and getting them into the chat room. And we're going to go ahead on our end and uh, get, and keep going with the presentation. So let me just hold the Okay. Great. All right, Daryl. So you should see the uh, opening slide to your presentation. I do. And we are ready to go ahead and get started. And for the participants out there, while we're going to get started, um, go ahead and get responses to those questions, and we will bring those up. And we have about three, three or four stopping points uh, during the presentation. So, Daryl, would you go ahead and take it away? Okay. Well, good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on your time zone. Um, 
really glad that, uh, that you joined us. Uh, let me recap how we're going to uh, spend our time. Uh, first, I'll share some of my perspectives about the distinctions between what we do as professional change agents and who we are when we engage our work. While I'm doing that, uh, please send me your questions or comments, and we'll periodically, we'll be pulling out some of those, uh, stop and, and discuss a few of them, and then I'll go back and, uh, and offer some more perspectives and more material, and we'll, we'll go back and forth a few times on that. Um, so uh, I really am interested in, in your take on this topic, so uh, I, I hope we get to hear from you. All right, so let's get started. Um, I, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. I was just so appreciative of uh, the invitation to have this dialogue because I'm fascinated with how we as change practitioners can be more intentional about our individual uniqueness and how it can create value for clients. When I say practitioners, I mean anyone who has accepted the role of facilitating major transitions in organizational or societal settings for that matter regardless of whether change agent is a formal part of your designation. And by clients, I mean those we're in service to, uh, whether you're an internal resource or an external consultant. So that's who we're gonna, that's what we're gonna focus on and that's who the discussion is intended for. Okay, let's go to the first slide. Let me be really clear about what we're not gonna talk about. We're not gonna be discussing frameworks and tools and techniques that we use in our work. Being skilled in more and more of the execution methodologies is absolutely essential to succeed in our, field, in our field, but there are plenty of forums available to engage in that kind of dialogue. What is in much shorter supply are opportunities for us to come together as a professional community to talk about how our unique humanness enhances or inhibits our effectiveness, whatever approach we use. So to create some space for this kind of a discussion, I want to declare this webinar as a methodology agnostic zone. For this kind of exchange to be productive, of course we need to be skills, skilled in, in you know, concepts and frameworks for implementing change, but it doesn't matter which one. We're going to be exploring what do you have to offer to clients in addition to whatever your degrees or certifications have armed you with. Next slide. All right, so with that disclaimer of what we're not going to talk about, let's get into what we are going to talk about. The focus for day, today is, is how we come across when, when we're using whatever methodology we've been trained in. There are two aspects that I believe contribute to our success as professional change facilitators. What we do, has, that, that's the concepts and the processes that we use and who we are. That's the true nature that we bring as practitioners. That's the, that's the substance of what we have to offer as human beings. Our time together today is going to be focused on the second of these, how we show up when we apply whatever tools and techniques that we're using in our craft. Okay, next slide. I'm gonna be using three questions as an organizing structure for, uh, for this time. Um, first, why is who you are so important in the work we do as change agents? Second question, how is character and presence reflected in who you are? And finally, what's involved in finding clients who would resonate with who you are? Okay, next question, ne next slide. And we got our first question. So let's dive into this first one and see where it takes us. Next slide. So to explain what I mean by who we are, I'm going to rely on some imagery. I looked for a long time for a metaphor that would point to what I meant by who we are. And then I came across this phenomenal piece of art by uh, Giuseppe Pannone. It's an Italian artist. The, the name of this, this particular sculpture is The Life Within. What you see here is a sculpture showing the original sapling that was the starting point for this massive tree that eventually developed. Now saplings are fragile, so over time they surround themselves with a trunk that provides protection from the elements. This is a work of art 
that has as its theme the sapling and the insulating buffer it provided itself, thus the title, The Life Within. It's, it's important to understand what you're, what you're looking at here. This isn't a rendering of what the young tree might have looked like. This is the genuine sapling that you're seeing. What the artist did was not carve a representation of a sapling out of wood. He removed the parts of the trunk that were covering up the actual sapling. He didn't create something, he liberated it. When I first saw this picture, I was struck with how accurately I think it depicts our struggle as change practitioners. We start off with a, a core of authenticity that, is then, that can then become over, overtaken by the pressures we encounter to be someone that we're not. I fear that many of us have lost contact with our true nature. A sapling has disappeared within what was meant to be a protective trunk. Next slide. Now, I was really blown away when I saw this next one. This is, this is the same artist, but showing him at work. Seeing, seeing the scale of what he's doing um, and, and actually how he did it really opened up some new perspectives for me, for me. It seems to me that there are several similarities between what he's doing in his work and what, it, what takes place when we attempt to reconnect with our true nature as change practitioners. Several things struck me. I mean, number one, uh, this is not a passive experience for him. He's, he's not sitting off to the side contemplating what that sapling might look like. He's in there. He, uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an active experience, right? Same, with, same for us. If we go exploring to uncover our sapling, um, that's, not, that's not an intellectual exercise. Something else that's a parallel for me is it, 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 it's hard work. I mean, look at, look at that picture. There's all kind of wood shavings and chips. And I mean, it, clearly he's been at this a while, right? Same thing is true for us. As we go about trying to dig into what's the core of who we are, that's not a, that's not a one-time event. And it's certainly not a quick fix. It looks to me like what I would describe what he's doing as meticulous in nature. He's not in there with a chainsaw, right? He's in there with actually probably very small tools, chipping away a little bit at a time. Well, I think that that's the same thing is true for us. I mean, certainly, that's my experience. And it, and it can't be outsourced. I mean, he's in there, right? He's looking for that, that, that sapling. No one else can go exploring to see what your sapling is. It, it requires you and only you. I got to admit, at, at this point, the metaphor maybe breaks down a little bit for me because, because my view on this is that this pursuit of our sapling, the core of who we are, it's more of a journey. It's not a destination. So we don't, we don't work at it, get it done, and then it's over. The artist had an advantage. He's working with a dead piece of wood, right? It's, it's big, but it's not, it's not still growing. So when he does uncover the sapling, then it remains uncovered. In our life, as it, if we work really hard to, to uncover the sapling and, and deal with who we really are, we're still, we're still adding layers of trunk, right? We're, we're still dealing with defense mechanisms that can cover up that sapling. So, so I see it as much more of a vigilance than, than any, any type of a, you know, once it's done, it's done. So to, but to continue playing off this metaphor, I think that each of us have a life within to play off on how he titled uh, the sculpture. We each have a vibrant, dynamic, spirited sapling, if you will, that's the primary source of the benefits we provide clients. I believe as change practitioners, we have the responsibility to ourselves and to those we serve to crawl through the layers of our own trunk in order to reveal and honor and express what's there. Okay, so maybe it's time to set aside the analogy and, and deal with the practical realities of what this kind of introspective exploration really looks like. The bottom line is, it involves struggling with some very, very tough questions. Let's go to the next slide.
here's some examples that you would be dealing with if you were serious about trying to uncover your sapling. If I wasn't so busy adhering to my well-established habits or always trying to keep clients in their comfort zone, what parts of my basic nature would come through? As a change practitioner, what do, what do I reveal when I'm truly authentic in my work? When I'm interacting with clients and expressing what's really in my heart, what surfaces that otherwise wouldn't? Next slide. If you were going to try to better understand the impact your trunk was having on how you relate to clients, you might be asking yourself questions like, well, what have I learned to hide from clients because it's just not worth the hassle if I don't? What parts of the real me do I water down when I'm communicating? How do I deal with how it makes me feel when I find myself in situations where it seems my clients are expecting me to be somebody that I'm not? Next slide. Where all this is taking us is who we are is just as critical as what we do. Why? Because the impact we have on clients can only be partially explained by what we know. What we do, as the tools and frameworks we use, is conveyed through who we are. Methodology doesn't apply itself. It rides on top of the humanness we bring to bear. Yet most of the training we've all been exposed to centers on what to say, what activities to engage in, not how to be with clients. I wish the various academic programs and associations that represented our field would be as concerned about grounding us in who we are as grading degrees and certifications based primarily on what we do. But that's generally not what happens. As individual professionals, I wish we placed as much attention on how we show up as what technical approach to use. But usually, that's not the case. Next slide. What we do is the technical side of our work. That's when we turn to frameworks and checklists and formulas. Who we are represents the artistic side of our work, where we rely on intuition and creativity and principles. Most of the training and certification programs available emphasize concepts and tools over how we interact with clients. And as a result, I'm concerned we're running a risk of populating our profession with technicians instead of artists. It's okay that learning what to do comes first, but Mastery requires that at some point, who we are as we leverage what we know how to do must become a priority. Next slide. It is who we are, not simply what's in our bag of intervention tricks, which ultimately determines whether we generate meaningful benefits for clients or not. I'm calling attention to the who we are part not because it's more important than methodologies, but because it's an aspect of our professional development that has been more neglected. To be properly anchored in our field, we need both. Okay, let, let, let's stop at this juncture. We've, I've raised some issues around this first question of the three. Um, so let's stop and hear what, uh, what some of your thoughts are. John, Marcella, do, do we have any inquiries to, to deal with? Yes. Um, well, there is uh, somebody's, uh, let me check this. Stacy says that as a change agent, the only tool you always have with you is yourself. And she is interested, how can you hone this tool? And I guess that has something to do with finding out who you are, who is the sapling first. What do you think, Daryl? Uh, well, first, I'm, I'm absolutely with you. Um, that that's we have to go about it by exploration. This isn't. Uh, there's not a formula. There's not a book. There's not an answer to this one. Uh, that's on the 
On the side of our work that deals with what to do, there are definitive answers. There's a diagnostic tool for this. There's an interpretation for that. There's a process for something else. This work is much more exploratory in nature. You're the only one that can pursue this. I, in, in the next few minutes, I'm going to be trying to, to provide some guidance about how we might go about doing that. But, but the key is that, uh, again, if I can point back to that, to that second picture of the artist working, we're the only ones that can, that can dig into and crawl through our own defensive mechanisms and, and the protection mechanisms to find what's really there. So for many of us, we've spent so many years trying to satisfy what other people thought we should be or say or do that we've lost touch with, with what's actually in there for us. So, so hopefully in the, in the next few minutes, I'll be providing some things that might give a hint to to how you might explore, but the bottom line is it's purely exploratory in nature. Only you can pursue that. Yeah, well, uh, there is another question that relates to that, I think it's uh, asked by Jerry. And um, the question is, what quality uh, makes a change practitioner most credible in your experience? Um, I believe that the most credible thing we can do when we show up in front of clients is be exceptionally guilt, skilled at whatever tools and techniques that we are, are prepared to apply, to be exceptionally skilled in those, and to authentically bring the perspective we have on those tools and techniques and the interpretation of what they mean. My interpretation won't be like anybody else's if I bring my full self forward if I'm not holding back for fear of offending or whatever. And, and the next practitioner can use the same tools and yet have a very different interpretation. So, so to me, credibility is, is, is founded on exceptional technical skills and, be, and being solid in knowing who we are and bringing that forward in a, in a bold fashion. Yes, okay. So knowing what your sapling is and and uh, not being afraid to show yourself and who you are. Well, Marcella, I, I, I'll speak for myself. I don't know that I ever get past being afraid of bringing myself forward. My, but my aspiration is not to be immobilized by that fear, to, to, to deal with the fear, because I think what I owe the client and myself is to put out who I really am and, and let that interpretation have what impact it can. Okay, cool. Um, there's one more question, and we'll go on with the uh, next section, uh, Daryl, and that's from Ron Coley. He said, where do principles fit in? Well, um, you know, the, the easiest place for me to see principles, in, and I think for a lot of people, is they see principles associated with the what we do side. You know, there's principles associated with with fostering commitment or, or, or dealing with resistance or uh, uh, helping to shift the culture. There's, there's not rules, there's principles. But I, I think of having principles on the who we are side as well. And in some of what I'm trying to bring forward in this webinar or, or and some principles that, that in my work in this area that have been helpful for me and I think some others in this pursuit, what are some principles that we can hang on to as we explore what our what our, our sapling is? And that, that's what the uh, you know the remaining minutes that we have, I want to bring forward what I believe are some important principles in the uh, on the side of the who we are, not just what we do. Okay, so yeah, let's go ahead and move forward. And for some of you who are having trouble getting into chassis, um, just make sure to send your questions in the GoToWebinar control panel. Um, under the questions tab, and we'll make sure to get those in for the next uh, the next two breaks. So, uh, there, why don't you go ahead and go to the you want to go to the next slide? Sure. Well, actually, the next slide was our slide for the questions. So, uh, so if you're going up to uh, yeah, there we are. All right. So, let's go to the second question. Where does character and presence fit in all this? And this is uh, for Ron. This is this is an element of principle for me. But, Seeing, seeing who we are as having a foundation in character and presence is a principle that I think uh, at least it's been helpful for me and hopefully, hopefully it could be for others. All right, next slide. 
who we are as change practitioners, I think, has two components. There's character. That's the core of our true nature. That's, that's what we have to contribute that no one else does. And there's presence. That's how we project this uniqueness to others. Next slide. Let's start with character. At the heart of who you really are as a practitioner is the character you bring to client relationships. Character is your most fundamental distinction. It's your sapling, to keep going back to the metaphor. It's the basis of your individuality. It's what makes you unmistakably you. Now, that said, character is incredibly elusive. It's just not easy to pin down for a couple of reasons. First, character is similar to light in that it's only visible when reflected off of something. You know, we, we don't actually see light itself. What we see is light after it's bounced off of something, after it bounces off of a table or a car or a building. Well, character is visible only when it bounces off of things like events and circumstances and conditions and relationships. Only then is it revealed. Another reason character is hard to pin down is if we equate it to the tree sapling, over time, it's covered up with layer after layer of protecting trauma. This makes it difficult for us to stay in touch with our own character, much less be able to accurately see somebody else's. And finally, character is elusive because most of us have been taught to appear to be what our clients or our bosses want us to be. We aren't often reinforced for bringing forward who we really are. Next slide. Something else that's important about character is that there, there isn't an on or off switch. It's always in play. We remain our internal essence regardless of external situations. You can be oblivious to your character or mindfully aware of it. You can disown it or celebrate it. You can sink under its negative implications or soar on its advantages. You can wish you were somebody else and you can leverage what you got. The one option you don't have is to be anyone other than who you really are. Next slide. What impact does character have on being a change practitioner? Well, the knowledge and skills you possess are actually neutral. By themselves, they can't do much of anything. It's your character's influence as you apply your knowledge and skills. That's what makes the difference. Character is, that's who you really are, distinguishes your work more than any methodology ever could. It's by far the most important determinant of the value clients receive from us. Next slide. So where does presence fit in? Character is your essence. And as such, it's an internal phenomenon, not directly accessible to anybody but you. Your interior character, therefore, needs an, a voice to be expressed to the exterior world. Presence is that voice. If you think of character as your truth, well, presence is your story. It's like a subliminal identity signature embedded within your client interactions. And it creates a force field that flows underneath and around your words and your actions, creating its own distinctive influence bubble, if you will. Next slide. And at any point in time, your presence is either a true expression of your character or it's not. There are two basic reasons why people reflect a presence different from who they really are. The first one is due to what I'm going to call disconnection. This is when people don't really know themselves at the level of character. They haven't explored their interior enough to penetrate the trunk and access the sapling. The second reason has to do with what I'll call camouflage. This is when people, they know what, who they are, but they intentionally or sometimes unconsciously either cover up who they are or try to add to their fundamental nature in order to present an image different from who they really are. 
Next slide. Generally speaking, congruence between character and presence is a good thing, but that doesn't necessarily ensure client effectiveness. Even if your presence is highly authentic, which means it reflects who you really are, that can contribute to or detract from successfully orchestrating change. Full transparency on your part might convey confidence or it might convey hesitation. You might come across with humility or arrogance. You could be seen as enthusiastic or indifferent. The two most important things about your presence are one, does it project a full measure of who you are and what you have to offer? And number two, is your true nature actually conducive to change facilitation? Next, next slide. Think of presence as the functional link between character and client impact. Regardless of the methodology used, it's character and presence that informs and mobilizes clients. Yet most of us are unintentional about the influence it projects. We pay more attention to our weight and our hair and what we're wearing than the impact our character and presence is having. All right, we're at another, we're at another good juncture. So uh, we, I've tried to raise some issues around this second question. Let's, uh, let's see what's come in that we can deal with from, uh, from others. Thanks, Daryl. Um, I'll read a couple, and then for, for, for those of you out there who have some uh, questions or reactions, you can um, put them in the chat room on the GoToWebinar control panel, uh, put them in chat um, or you can hashtag Nexus Webinars on Twitter and send them that way too. Um, Vicki Cardino uh, said, no question, just a comment. She's thrilled to hear the distinction on uh, who you are versus what you do. Uh, that, that was uh, previously the, the message was just said. Um, she said she endeavors to bring that into her work in executive development, but it's also what she teaches her OD students. Uh, it's helpful to have other ways to think about this, and so she said thank you. Um, Mark, Mark Vanderbilt said uh, that the metaphor referring to character and president, presence, that story and truth, he said thanks for that. Um, and then Ann wants to know what are the best characteristics of uh, good change facilitation? The best characteristics for change facilitation? Mm -hmm. uh, um, well, let me, so there's two ways we can interpret that. Uh, let me dodge one and see if I can address the other. Because there's a whole range of characteristics for, for facilitating that into the what we do side. There's, there, there's a whole body of work around, around facilitating. So, so I'm going to interpret it that it's the characteristics around facilitation that, that are tied to who we are. And so if I interpret it that way, um, again, I'm going to assume that the practitioner is skilled in in tools and techniques. That's a given. If we don't have a, a, a solid foundation of methodology, quite frankly, you know, we're not going to we're not going to get anywhere. But if we assume that, then what do you add to the the general principles around good facilitation? Well, what we're adding is authenticity. We're adding. We're, we're modeling. When we're facilitating, what are we trying to do with our clients? Most of the time, we're trying to draw them out help them be more clear, help them to, to oftentimes confront things that they have been hesitant to do so. Uh, another way to interpret that is to bring forward who they really are in the meetings that they have been historically maybe hiding from. Well, there's, there's technical facilitation skills associated with that for sure. But for this conversation, what I would say is the most important thing we can do to facilitate others coming forward with who they are is for us to model that by coming forward with who we are. So that, you know, given our short time frame that in this dialogue, that'll, I'll keep my answer limited to that, but, but let's, be, let's be what it is we are 
we are promoting for others so that they can have a sense of the reality of it. Okay, cool. There's a couple other comments. One is just a comment from uh, Katrina. And she says this is an engaging presentation, and thank you. Um, she says one comment from her is, uh, being authentic with our clients creates a space where they can feel encouraged and safe to be their authentic self. And then Mark uh, Vandeveld has one question. says, how would you translate your character and presence um, into an offer written to your client? And I'm assuming that it's like a proposal or a, some type of, um, business material. I'm yeah. wondering how you Well, I, you know, again, I, I don't mind sharing uh, a comment about my own experience as long as no one takes that as the answer. Uh, it, so, but I'll share with you one way to play off of Mark's question. Um, what I try to do in our in our in our proposal work at Connor Partners when we're proposing for you know what what to do business, if you will, is I always let the client know that, yes, we're going to do a diagnosis, sure, but we're going to come back not with what we think they're ready to buy. We're going to come back with a brutally honest picture of what we see and what we think that they should be doing. Uh, knowing full well, much of the time, that it, it, is, it is beyond what they are ready to deal with. But, uh, but my commitment to them is to help them match what, what could be done and arguably what should be done against what they are going to do. That doesn't make what they're going to do bad or wrong. I just want to make sure that, they, that they're not dealing with a recommendation based on what I think they're going to buy rather than what I think is actually going on. Well, to me, uh, in answer to the question, that's a way of me demonstrating an, an aspect that's fundamental to who I am. That doesn't mean that, that others would necessarily do that, but that's when I explored my sapling, I came to the conclusion that it was it was vital that I express that to to clients and prospective clients. Great. Thanks, Daryl. And I think that's it from the chat room. So let's uh, and, and her to say thank you for that response. So let's go ahead to the next uh, section. All right, so we're on our third question now. So how do you find clients who resonate with the real you? All right, I've explored my character. I've, you know, I have some sense of the presence I project, and I'm, I'm trying to authentically match those up. But what do I do with it? What's the, what's the practical reality of where's the value in this for others, not just myself? Next, next question. Next slide. So to pursue this question, I'm going to invoke another metaphor. Uh, this time, it's a musical one. To find the right client, you've got to not only play the music that you love and are uniquely good at, you've got to play it for people who really want to hear it. We each have our respective musical styles, if you will. It's comprised of the, whatever methodology we use along with who we are when we apply it. Assuming you're skilled in the concepts and techniques you use, the critical issue becomes, are you bringing your full self forward and are you doing so in front of the right audience? Next slide. The paradox here is that by limiting your audience, you gain, not lose. You enlarge your fan base when you play to a more select market. But the, but the fans I'm talking about aren't the ones with a casual interest in your music, or worse, the ones that place little value in what you're playing. I'm talking about true fans. True fans are the ones who not only admire what you play, they respect how you play it. And most importantly, they open themselves up to let the music have its intended impact. Here's the secret to finding clients who will value who you are. Don't play to attract the crowds. Play what's in your heart. Perform your unique music and be on the lookout for the true fans that are drawn in. Next slide. 
Look, clients need to engage both their heads and their hearts before they'll relate to us as highly valued resources. Well-constructed methodologies can impress the intellect of those we work with, but it takes a strong character and a trusty presence to speak to their hearts. Next slide. Your true nature is synonymous with who you are, and it has an epicenter called your character. That character is conveyed to clients through the presence you cast. It's by way of your inherent character and the presence you emit that you're able to invoke the kind of client impact we all strive for. So I'd like to, I'd like to close this segment. Uh, I'm sorry, next slide. I'd like to close this segment by leaving you with three challenges to take home. Three to-dos, if you will, that if pursued, could dramatically raise your game as a change practitioner. First, deeply explore your character to reconnect with who you really are. Two, use your presence to authentically bring forward the full force of what you have to offer. And three, seek out clients who truly value your character and presence package. I'm talking about the ones who actually feel fortunate to have the chance to work with you. That, that's where you're going to have the greatest impact. It's character and presence that separate change technicians who merely submit deliverables and meet timelines from masterful practitioners who provide valuable insight and wisdom. We can't cultivate character by acquiring new concepts. And the kinds of presence I've been talking about here isn't made more impactful by developing skills. This isn't about learning something new. It's about uncovering our true nature and bringing it forward to create value for those we serve. Look, facilitating change is either a profession that makes a difference or a gut. If, as some of us believe, we really do provide an essential ingredient to successful transitions, then we owe it to ourselves and our clients to be as prepared as possible to fulfill our role. That includes not only being exceptionally good at what needs to be done, but also showing up in a way that capitalizes on the full measure of who we are. If all this sounds hard and risky, it's because it's hard and it's risky. Get over it, that's just the way it is. The call to action here isn't, it's, it's different, it's, it's not an easy call. The call to action is for us to get past our fears and hesitations and to press ahead and untangle whatever is holding us back from giving a full voice to what we have to offer. To excel in this profession demands nothing less. All right, so I, I, that, that finishes my prepared comments, but uh, before we go to the last set of questions, um, I want to tell you about a forum for exploring the kinds of issues that we've been highlighting here. Let's go to the next slide. The forum I'm talking about is a workshop it's about raising your game. It's called Foundations. It's part of the curriculum offered through the Connor Academy. We call it Foundations because it is both a standalone professional development experience and it's a gateway to an extensive set of offerings meant to provide a challenging but nurturing learning environment for seasoned change practitioners. If the time has come to explore your internal landscape in order to have a greater external impact, this two-day session will provide guidance and resources and community. This, this, and just like this webinar, the Foundations Workshop isn't about methodology. It's about exploring how our character and presence can be used to enhance the value we bring to clients. If you're an experienced change practitioner and you're committed to advancing the level of your effectiveness by focusing on who you are, not just on what you do, 
I hope you'll consider joining us at one of the upcoming sessions, either here in the States or, or the ones offered in Europe. For more information, you can you, you, you see the, the, there's a website that is Connor, ConnorAcademy.com will provide more background for you, but it, it's a way it, it's a way of connecting to and, and and plugging into a community of other practitioners that are that are pursuing these same kinds of issues and questions. All right, so with that, let's go to our last uh, last set of questions. What what have we got? Um, Daryl, this is Marcella. I see a question from Jerry, who asks, "How do you know what your clients value before you started working with them?" I'm assuming, Jerry, you mean what might they value in me? Um, and uh, I, I'll tell you, I, I actually, that's not my starting point. <laughs> what, what, I'm, what I'm getting clear about, what I'm attempting to pursue is to be as transparent with them about who I really am and the value that that brings and I and I it basically I'm leaving it up to them to determine whether there's any value in that or not. Uh, I I believe, Jerry. I think we can come forward with a lot of really valuable aspects to who we are. It simply isn't a good match for the clients. I I, I happen to be, you know, fairly explicit and direct and and confrontive about what I see. That that's not necessarily a good fit for some people, for some clients. So, and that, and that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with what I'm bringing forward. That's who I am. Nor is there anything wrong with what their needs are. But I don't, I don't start with trying to assess what they will value from me. I start with trying to be as clean as I can about, about my own character and presence so that I can, I can in effect give them the clean, the clearest shot at me as they can possibly take to see who I really am and, and let them determine whether or not that there's value. Hey, Daryl, there are a couple questions on uh, the third section and uh, specifically your music metaphor. Uh, first one is from Jake Jacobs. It's how do we find people who want to listen to our music? Um, my, my view, I, I've learned that it's very hard for me to predict who's going to resonate with the most authentic expression of who I am. So, so you know, everybody's got to come at this in their own way. For me, the way I find them is I put myself out there. I just, I, 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 I come forward as far as I can as quickly as I can to tell a client, look, I've been at this game for, for four decades now. Uh, this is what I've learned. That's the, what I do. And this is who I am. This is how I relate to clients. For example, I tell them very early, I'm not a good vendor. I'm a good partner. I'm actually not a very good vendor. And if, if what you need is a vendor, there's nothing wrong with it, having a vendor relationship. I just, I'm not really very good at that. That's, so what I do to find them is I, I broadcast as, as definitively and as often as I can. And what I'm hoping is that, that there are people out there and their radios are turned on and they're at that frequency. And that's when we find a match. So, so that's how I've learned to find them. There may be other ways. I hope, you know, I'm sure there are, but that's how I find them. And the next one is from Monique. She says, could you please give me an example of how you play your music and be on the lookout for your true fans when you move to a new location where you don't know anyone yet? Um, so I guess it would be a, a play off of the theme of what we were just talking about. If, I, if I'm entering into a, a new environment, and um, you know that happens whether you're an external consultant or an internal practitioner. They're, they're, we always are facing new environments in various ways. Um, do I do I am I attentive? Am I listening? Am I taking in, absorbing where they are and what's going on with them? Absolutely, absolutely. But at the same time, I'm bringing myself forward as as quickly. And as specifically as I can, because I don't want to waste their time. I don't want to waste, certainly don't want to waste my time 
if we could if we could quickly find out by me being transparent about about who I am, what do I what do I really value in these kind of relationships, which are things like working with people that here are things that are important to me, and I tell clients this. I want to work with people that are as serious about the changes they're pursuing as I am about my my profession in helping them. Uh, I want to match up with people that have that kind of uh, of they have that sense of criticality to it. I want to work with people that don't find brutally frank communications always easy, but they always value it. And so I just put as many of those things forward as I can now. When I share that with you guys, I'm not saying that that's what you should be doing. In fact, to me, the heart of this whole this whole business of finding our sapling is not to go replicate what somebody else has found. Um, that's not only not very effective; it's just lazy, to be honest with you. We we each have to dig through our own trunk and find our own sapling. I'm saying, I'm just sharing with you what I found when I when I got there. There's all kinds of saplings, and in any of them, and all of them match up with certain clients. The best thing we can do for ourselves and the clients is to bring that forward as quickly as we can. All right. Cool. We have a couple more. Uh, first, from Mark. Mark says that he'll be joining uh, one of the workshops that um, in Europe. He says, "How would you explore your true character?" Uh, what techniques or uh, uh, practices do you have for that? The personally, I I am on the lookout for some of the things I mentioned earlier. Um, my character is revealed to myself. Forget anybody else. I find my own character. When I see myself bounce off of events, circumstances, conditions, and relationships, so I'm a, I'm very attentive to to waking up, being aware that I'm that I'm either entering something that, that one of those categories that's significant, I'm in the middle of it, or I am, or I've just I've just completed an event or or, or something, and and so I I'm I'm. I use these junctures in my life to try to better understand what do I want to bring forward about who I really am, and, and what do I want, how can I use that to further my the priorities and the commitments that I have made, uh, or in retrospect, how did I relate to that situation, and, and 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 was it authentic, and did I further did I further advance what the client. Had had is trying to pursue. So I see it as either something I can wake up to in the middle of going into in the middle of or on the other side of events, circumstances, conditions, or relationships. Now there's all kinds of of techniques that we that we, like in the workshop. We have a, a different techniques, different questions, different exercises that help foster that. But from my standpoint. All of the exploration around character and presence really has to start with us being mindful, us being us waking up to the moment to see how are we coming across and is it authentically who we are and is it actually fostering facilitation of change. All right, thanks, Daryl. Um, so, it, so for everybody out there, it's about one fifty-eight. We're going to go a little bit over just because I want to get in uh, this one last question from Ron Kohler, a comment a question from Ron Kohler. And I want um, Marcella to give a chance to talk about the Leadership and Change magazine, and then I want to close out uh, the session with some next steps because there's a, going to be a good follow-up discussion for this session on LinkedIn. And so just bear with us for a couple more minutes. Uh, everybody, you guys are doing great. And so Ron Kohler says, uh, First, he says that he urges all change practitioners to attend Daryl uh, Daryl Raising Your Game workshop. He says it's one of the best things he's been to um, since uh, the Cassie Vandermeer practicum. He plans on attending again, and once was not enough. And he wants to know um, how do you think your career would have been different had you practiced more of the RYG way earlier in the 70s, 80s, and 90s? So, uh, 
RYG is raising your game for, for those that are new to this nomenclature. Um, I think that, um, I'll answer it this way. I think that much of my passion for this at this stage of my career is precisely because I was completely unaware, uh, unattentive to any of this side for the, for the majority of the 40 years I practiced this craft. Um, I, I, I believe that unconsciously I started gravitating toward this, you know, probably 15 years ago. But the, but the, first, the first half of my career, it was nothing but tools and techniques. And I, I couldn't get enough tools and techniques. And I believe that I, um, I believe I was proficient in the sense that I, I did create value, but I, I created the value that you can create when you're a good technician. I wasn't an artist because I didn't bring enough of me. I was scared, to be honest with you. I was scared that I might turn somebody off or I wouldn't get the next engagement if I showed who I really was. So I, I believe it would have made a huge difference if I could have woken up early. And, uh, and part of my passion now is to, is to at least raise this opportunity for other practitioners that might be earlier in their career so that they can, uh, they can get a head start and not, <laughs> not wait as long as I did. Daryl, thank you so much. Thanks for your, your poignant responses to all the questions and just for showing us um, kind of three approaches towards the Raising Your Game session. Um, so <laughs> kudos and hats off to you. We really do appreciate your time. Well, and, and thanks to you and Marcella and, and, and everybody that came to, the, came to the webinar so we could have this dialogue. I, I genuinely appreciate the opportunity for us to, to have this kind of exchange. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, no Thank you, Daryl. Oh, and uh, Marcella, you see your slide up there. So why don't you go ahead and tell everybody out there yeah. uh, a little bit about the magazine, and then we'll go into next step. Yeah. Well, I, I I introduced the magazine at the beginning. Maybe not everybody was there, but the basics are on the slide. I mean, we are a digital PDF magazine that you can download. And um, our focus is on positive leadership, inclusive change, organizations of the future of the 21st century and cultures of kindness and our approach is uh, our angle of the articles is really positive it's uh, practical and personal because we don't want the uh, generalist uh, 10 points to please your boss articles but we really want genuine authentic content just like the webinar we just had with Daryl that is the kind of questions we ask ourselves in the magazine and we want to inspire professionals, consultants, coaches and leaders to make a difference in the workplace and thus the world. So I started this magazine with a partner 15 months ago because I felt that this angle was lacking and I think we need a community, we need to support each other to, to raise our game and to bring positive leadership and positive changes in today's workplaces. So I hope you will go over to uh, the URL, the web link that you can see there, leadershipandchangemagazine.com slash 2015-webinars. And that's where you will find a free mini magazine to download. And it contains an article with my experiences in the two-day workshop that Daryl Connor uh, gave. So uh, you can read more about it and it will give you an impression of our magazine. So we hope that you will join the club and be part of the magazine community. We have a member website with uh, webinars, white papers for download, um, audio interviews and more. And so we can support each other to spread positive leadership, culture and change. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your time. All right, thanks Marcella. Um, so as you guys are leaving, if you want to do a bumper sticker at yourself, check out the chat room or as a question panel, you can go ahead. Um, we are having another Nexus webinar again on uh, February 20th at 1 p.m. on Rethinking Think Tanks. Um, the slides for today's session, the PDF slides of, uh, of Daryl's slides will be sent out in addition to our Nexus slides, and all the links will be included for that as well. We hope that you'll join us for a debrief on LinkedIn uh, for Daryl uh, Connor's webinar today. We'll be providing some follow-up questions uh, this afternoon. 
and go to uh, nexusforchange.org to get all information about our upcoming uh, Leadership and Change magazine uh, presentations as well as other Nexus webinars. And then as you leave, you'll be provided with a Nexus webinar survey through GoToWebinar. And so you'll get an icon that says give feedback to go to webinar. Go ahead and fill out that survey uh, so we can give Daryl, Marcella, and um, us at Nexus for Change some feedback on your experience today. So thank you all for being here. Um, we, all, we truly appreciate it. We will be sending out information um, as a follow-up from today's session by tomorrow, including uh, the folder link to all of the documents and the recording of the session. So. Thank you all for visiting our Nexus for Change website, and we look forward to seeing you online. And thanks, Marcel and Daryl, uh, one last time for being here. It was, it was great. Thanks to everybody. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.